Wise Guys Cooking is brought to you by Everson Spice, Restore a Concrete Designs, Catalina Express, and Bonded Roofing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Frankie. Welcome to Wise Guys Cooking. We have a great show for you tonight. You know, I was thinking about love the other day because I recently just got married. And uh, my friend Tony asked me, Frank, how would you know if you're truly in love? I said, I don't know, Tony. He said, well, ask yourself this question. Would you mind being financially destroyed by this person? <laughs> you know, <laughs> love is fickle. It's kind of like luck. Speaking of luck, my pal Vito the other day he ran into his house and he yelled to his wife, Maria, Maria, I just won the lottery. Pack up your bags. She said, should I pack for warm weather or cold weather? He said, I don't care, just as long as you're out of the house by noon. <laughs> I said, Vito, how could you treat your wife that way? He says, Frank, it's easy. You see, the difference between love and lust is that no more than about 200 bucks. <laughs> Listen, we'll be right back, so stick around for Wise Guys Cooking. Just an hour away lies a place full of adventure, romance, and relaxation. Catalina Island, your local island paradise. Up to 30 escapes daily aboard the Catalina Express from Long Beach, San Pedro, and Dana Point. Welcome back, folks. We've got a special guest for you tonight. Mr. Frank DiGambliano is here. Frank, it's good to have Frank? you here. Thank tonight. you for having me. It's my pleasure. Yeah, that's great. You know, I heard you had something happen to you when you were a young uh, boy. Why don't you share that story with sure, us? Sure, I'd love to share that story. See, once when I was young, I found a pickle. A pickle? Yeah, I found, I mean, I literally found an abandoned pickle by the side of a little trail. Now, as a boy of 12, this confused me. I mean, who abandons a pickle? You know, shouldn't, shouldn't there be some sort of agency to protect pickles from such horrific and uncaring behavior? Well, you'd think so. Yeah, like the SPCP, Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Pickles. I, I mean, I don't know, but there was no such agency at the time. So I did what any normal boy of 12 would do on acid. And that's, uh, I, uh, I took the pickle home and named him Louie. Louie. Yeah. And we became best friends. I mean, Louie was my guy, you know? I, I used to put him on a leash and walk him around like he was a dog. Yeah. Now, I stopped the whole walking thing pretty soon after I started because he would lose little pieces of his pickle skin. Mm. And occasionally, he'd get drugged through some dog crap. So it was, it was not a good thing, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, Louie and I, we were tight, you know? I once enrolled him in night school. Oh, really? Yeah, but the best he could do was like a C average. Oh. But I didn't care, because I didn't love Louis for his intellect. Oh. I loved him for his other awesome traits. Mm. For example, let me tell you, he was docile. Oh. He never bit anybody. I'll bet. I know, but I, I could tell some people had bitten him. <laughs> you know, it was really, it was really sad. Ooh. Also, he was quiet. Not like those damn dogs or birds or other loud, obnoxious animals that people think are great pets. No, Louis was different than all of them. He was great. One day, I took him to uh, school for show and tell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, he's my friend, right? So I took him, I stood up there in front of the whole class, and I wanted to tell them about my friend Louis and what he meant to me. Oh, sure. And as I started to do that, the kids started laughing like crazy. Oh, you're kidding. No. Even the teacher, Mrs. Johnson, laughed so hard 
that some stuff shot out of her nose. Oh. You know, and I, at first I, I thought she was an ally because the stuff was the same color as Louie. Oh. <laughs> but no, but no, you know what? She was laughing harder than the kids. Oh, wow. So you know what I did? What? I picked Louie up and I threw him at her face. No. I did, I did. Now, you know, remember I told you he, I found him by the trail, right? Yeah. I think he was at that trail for like three or four years oh. because he was dried out. So when he hit her in her forehead, he broke into a million pieces. And, and, and Mrs. Johnson fell to the floor unconscious. And I got to tell you, Frank, at that moment, I realized why Louie and I met. We met because we were destined to whack Mrs. Johnson in the face. <laughs> I'll never forget you, Louie. Well, folks. That was a great story, Frank. Uh, we'll be right back after this short commercial. Stick around. Isn't it time to restore your old, worn-out concrete? Get the beautiful textured look of Tyler Stone with Restora. We've been serving the valley for over 26 years and specialize in the restoration of concrete and decorative concrete. We have become the best in the industry I know it and I could prove it. Any design, any color, any texture. And we have a five-year guarantee. Restore your kitchens, baths, pool decks, patios, driveways, and garage floors with Restora. Visit our showroom and be inspired. Well, we're back again, folks. You know, the line between crazy and ingenious is often a very thin line. Our guest tonight, Frank, the inventor, Monteforti often crosses that line. Let's welcome Frank. I've been thinking about these ideas for months, years, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Frank, why don't you show us what you've got? Okay, you ready? There we go. You know, when I used to work uh, uh, selling uh, office equipment in the office with all the boys, when we have a good day, we make a big sale, we want to celebrate. Okay, how do you celebrate? The stuff. So I invented a flask tie. See, a tie, like this. And in the back, you take out your booze, uh, you take a drink, you put it back, and you put a go in. And everybody loved it. I guess not. That's anyway. Cool. <laughs> and then we go, um, you know, mamas, uh, they do a lot of work, hard work. Our mamas, they do all a lot of work, and they cook, and they sew, they, uh, they do with the bambinos and everything, because in the old days, uh, they just stay home, okay? But now, I invented the baby mop. And what it is, the baby, the bambino, okay? This is like a bambino, yeah, okay. So here's what we do. You know, every day, the baby wants to go crawling, okay? So maybe, maybe this invention, <laughs> we put a little mop on his chest as long as he go, go, go. And Mama said, clean hey, that's floor. not bad, yeah, okay? Yeah. It helps, don't you know? Yeah. You know, he, he likes it anyway. Okay, that's, that's good. That's pretty I, good. I, I have another that's one? Pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Oh, the best. This is, I love this. My wife, Angelina, God bless her. <laughs> we are, we're very, uh, very romantic. I'm a romantic man. Most people, I guess, are romantic, you know. So I invented the cheek-to-cheek -cheek pillow, okay? And I'll tell you what it is. I like to go to bed cheek-to-cheek -to -cheek with my wife or people with their girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever, whatever makes it good. And this is how it works. Oh, I'm getting tired of this, too. Here it is. So, Angelina, you mind, Tony? Evangeline and I, <laughs> we, make a, we make a pin over here, and, turn, and we go cheek-to-cheek. Very romantic, very nice. Other people do cheek to cheek, but I'm not. That's 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 not that my kind of show. It's that time. Okay. I, that's an amazing. Okay. Yeah, I got to I got to move on. Oh, right. Okay. It's an amazing invention. Boy, this is a hard work. Anyway, uh, here we go. I think personally that everybody loves to sing, especially Italians. We love to sing. Now I'm not a good singer. You know, I like it. You know, but it's not my good. But to tell you something, when I go into the shower. Mom, I sound like Mario Lanza. So I invented the shower microphone. You take your soap, you do your thing, you do your business, blah, blah, blah. And in the meantime, here's the handle, 
And it sounds better, I don't know why, when you start singing, and it's just fantastic. But I like this. <laughs> I, I believe it. I do. I believe <laughs> it. <laughs> what's, the, what's the other thing you're inventing? Oh, and this one. You're going to love this one. We're going to put the peanut butter, mix it with Cialis, and then put it on your head and it makes your hair grow. Really? Uh, how, how's that working for you, Frank? I got four pieces came last week, right here. Those oh, two. I, I yeah. see them, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but that's, it, it, it takes time. Everything just takes time. You're right. Well, Frank, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show tonight. Folks, we'll be right back after this short break. Stick around. Thank you. Thank you. Since 1972, Bonded Roofing Company has been providing roofing services with the highest degree of quality and craftsmanship right here in Long Beach, California. We specialize in both residential and commercial roof installations, coatings, and repairs. We're fully insured and bonded, so you can count on our credibility and professionalism. No job is too large, too small, or too difficult for us to handle. So get your free estimate today by calling 562 427 1604. Once again, that number is 562 427 1604. Our professional roofers look forward to speaking with you soon because here at Bonded Roofing, we always have you covered. Hey, we are back again, and we've got a very special guest for you tonight. Mr. Morris Diamond is here with us. <laughs> Well, Morris, I have been reading your book lately, and it is absolutely fascinating. I know. <laughs> it's called The Name Dropper, People I Slept With. Right. You know, and there are so many great stories in here. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Telly Savalas, um, gosh, uh, Shirley MacLaine. Um, how long have you been in the business? I started as a band boy with Tommy Dorsey. I was hired, uh, and that was in February 1940. Mm. Wow. So that's over 70 some odd years. You're that old? Uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and Sinatra had joined the band a month before. So we were the new birds on the block, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And uh, we became close friends all the way through life. Super for me. Well, tell us about some of the stories that you've had with uh, Telly and maybe Shirley MacLaine. Well, Telly, uh, in later years, I got into be a song plugger and a record plugger and so on. Uh, as a record plugger, I started plugging in these radio stations in uh, New York. And Telly was a programmer for a late night disc jockey. So I had to contact him. Sure. And I'd say, well, well I didn't want to have dinner one night or something. He says, well, I got to go to work early. I don't know. He says, well, unless you want to come to the station and bring dinner. But anyway, we, we became very close friends personally mm -hmm. with our families and everything. Uh, that was for many years. I used to run a tennis tournament for the music industry all the disc jockeys, all the managers, accountants, and everybody. And I did it for a few years, and when I started doing it, Telly said, uh, well, what are you gonna do it? I said, got the good, I got calls in San Diego, Las Vegas, and the people want us to have weekends there. And he says, oh, sounds good. He says, uh, I wanna be your host. And he was my host for 13 years. Wow. At every, every tennis match. Wow. Now, who was your favorite to travel with? They were all great. Uh, Tom Jones was, was super. Uh, Telly, of course, was great. Uh, we traveled all over the world many times. You were uh, out with Michael Jackson, weren't you? I had Michael ja I booked Michael Jackson. For 22 years, I booked a concert in Turkey for 22 years. Uh, I worked with a, uh, with a promoter there, and uh, he would tell me who he would like to take a shot with. And uh, I would book them in the U.S. 
and shipped them and slept them <laughs> to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they were all fine. Shirley MacLaine was, was sensational. We had a lot of fun when she had it. She'd come for a week and do uh, two concerts, uh, one in Istanbul, and she'll do another one in, uh, near Ephesus. She was funny in a way. Uh, when she had a day off, she wanted to go sightseeing or go to a pool or go something. So there was, there's a city called Temecula, Turkey, where they have people go to go in the waters to get healthy and everything. She says, that sounds good. So I talked to my promoter and uh, he said, well, I'll get you a limo and you and Shirley get down. I said, I want to take one of the girls in the office with me in the car. And uh, Shirley said, I want to take my traveling manager with me. I said, fine. And we did that. We got in the car and we drove down to, to Temecula. She was reading her magazines. She was always reading Newsweek or Life, anything political. She loved that. As a matter of fact, when she booked a place to play, she had to have the, in, in her uh, notes that she had a TV set in her dressing room that gets CNN. Oh, She had to know about the movie. Uh, but anyway, uh, she was reading a magazine, and I'm sitting in the back with her, and I said, I, I cracked the line, something. And she looks at me. I said, I'm just trying to be funny. She said, try harder. <laughs> try harder. <laughs> That's good. We had fun. As a matter of fact, when we left, she was there for a week, and we left, and I was staying at the Tully's flat in London after the show. So I flew up there, I was going to fly up to London. Okay, now she has a car meeting her, chauffeur. And she said, well, I'll drop you off. Where are you staying? I said, I'm staying at Tully's apartment. Uh, she says, Oh, okay. So where is it? And I told her. She says, well, I'm staying two blocks away at the hotel. So she says, come with me and I'll drop you off with the limo. So I, take, I come with the limo. We get to the Tully's building. And she says, I'm going to go up and say hello with you. And this is now 1030 at night. Mm -hmm. She says, I want to come up and say hello to you. And I said, okay, fine. And Tully was in Romania somewhere uh, doing a film, but his family was there. Oh, okay. I find out the next day, the mother thought I was bringing her broad up into the apartment. Your turn. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I just want to know, do you have any special stories about you and Frank Sinatra? Something that uh, would be very interesting. Nothing I'd want to put on the air. <laughs> oh, <laughs> of course. Well, folks, let's give a great hand for Morris Diamond. Good to have you here tonight. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, we'll be right back after this next commercial. Wise Guys Cooking. My name is Rebecca Romano, and this is my Uncle Frank. Hello, I'm glad to be here. Uncle Frank, I couldn't do it without you. I'm oh, so happy you're yes. here. We're going to have fun today, that's for sure. Today, we are going to make something really delicious. Today, oh, we're going to make pasta carbonara. Oh, fabulous. With a little bit of a twist, we're going to use spaghetti. Oh, lovely. So, um, just to start off with the items that we have here. I've got the Parmesan cheese, oh, Romano cheese. Oh, that's you. That's me. <laughs> Pancetta, Pancetta, garlic, oh, garlic, salt, pepper, oil, and eggs. We have four eggs to be precise. You're ready for everything. Go for it. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, to get prepared is have our pancetta cut up and diced. Mm -hmm. um, our cheeses are ready to go. Um, the Romano cheese just. Uh, 
a light shred, uh, about that much, about a cup full. And uh, we're gonna start boiling our water, which has already come to a boil, luckily. We're gonna add salt, you know, Perfect. to your desired taste. Yep. 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 You know, us Italians, we, we're not really good with measurements. <laughs> we just kind of go based right. on what we like. You're right. So first thing we're gonna do is put our pasta in our boiling right. water. Um, I'm gonna use uh, about half of this. Half, half, um, sure, why not? Yeah. And then we'll just spread it out like that. Beautiful. Right. It's a perfect pan for cooking. And you're gonna have this pan already warm. Okay. The reason you're gonna have this pan already warm is because you're gonna put the meat in it, but you're gonna to need to use just a slight amount of olive oil. Olive oil. So let's go with about a nice S. How do you uh, feel about that? I love olive oil. Everybody loves olive oil. Everybody love loves it. olive oil. <laughs> so we're making, um, we're making enough for you and I today. Okay, that's enough. No, yeah, you think so? So you get take care of. That's exactly. Good. So we're gonna use half the pancetta. Okay. Um, probably about a, a full cup. A basta. You know, maybe two. Yeah. Just gonna kind of cook it around. It's looking good already. And you see how there's not too much oil there. Yeah. It's yeah, just a, sure. a fair for amount sure. of oil. <laughs> so with pasta, uh, you're gonna cook it to your desired. Um, temperature. I like it al dente. That's, that's the only way. It's the only the way. Only way. Um, especially when doing carbonara because you are going to mix it. Exactly. In the meantime, like I said many times before, we're always going to stay active while cooking. We've got our pasta going, we've got our pancetta, and now we're going to make, crack some eggs. We're going to crack about four eggs here. You any good at cracking eggs, Uncle Frank? Yeah, good. It's cracking a lot of things, but oh. the eggs are pretty good too. <laughs> you want me to do something with this? Uh, sure, you want to stir it up? Oh, sure. That's what we have to Stay do. Stay active. Very nice. Of Thank you. This is a uh, this is our sauce. You're not going to want to stir this in the pan because it becomes almost like a a breakfast a scramble, breakfast. right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, I like to use a lot of pepper. You know, sometimes you'd use a pinch, but we're going to go a little overboard here. Um, how that? much would you say that is? About four tablespoons? I think uh, you're close, yeah. All yeah, right. So good. And we're going to beat this. Beating. I like beating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, boy. So good. Yeah, that's good. And then we're going to take that to a simmer now. Perfect. Thank you. You don't want to burn the meat. No, you definitely no, don't want to no, burn no, the meat. No, no. So. My uh, eggs are very peppery. This is great for flavor because you're about to add the cheese, and that's gonna. These two cheeses are gonna be really dominant in flavor. So we're gonna want to make sure that it's not all cheese, it's not exactly. all pepper, yeah. it's not all one certain thing. Yeah. It's it's everything. A great mix, a great mix. That's it. So okay, add you your cheese. You know, kind of stir that in. See that? Oh, you like that consistency? You've got a good hand how you do that. Thank That's you. Good. That's good. That's good. And then we're going to grab another handful here. Okay. This is a wonderful thing about being Italian <laughs> is you just kind of gauge it based right. on your eyes. But if, if I were going to if I were gonna suggest anything, I would suggest about a half a cup because we used half of the amount of pasta that we would ordinarily use. This is two servings. Nobody uses exactly amount, you know. Nobody. It's a, a pinch here and a pinch there. And a, that's what my mother used to do it. So, and, and it works. So it's all that goes. Go, go for the garlic, the best. What is what is an Italian dish without garlic? <laughs> you're gonna take your garlic. It's peeled. Yep. And you're gonna press it. Right. And it's easy to press. It releases all the flavor. It's really nice. We're gonna put you this in the pinch it down. Good. Maybe Good. do. We like a lot of garlic, so let's yes, go ahead and yes. do another one. You can hear that nice crack. Did you hear that crack? Yeah, I used to have garlic under my on my uh, my little chain there one time. No, this Did is you? starting good. This is starting to look good, really good. Oh, this is looking great. This is looking great. Let me see here. Go for it. You nailed it, Uncle Frank. You nailed it. I like that. You are great. <laughs> look at this. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for this nice burgundy color, and uh, the garlic will roast a little bit more. Okay. Let's give it about... Right off the bat, yeah. 60, you smell that? Oh, Isn't absolutely. that beautiful? Yep, yep, yep. So beautiful. All right, let's check on our pasta. Oh, look at this little guy for you. 
There you Fantastic. are. And one for me. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so Let's we're gonna it. pour. Okay. Serve down our pinch of Beautiful. Pepper. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to take it from a simmer to a little bit of a higher heat because okay. we're getting ready to incorporate. You want to stir that up? Sure. Thank you. Let me do something here. I know. That's looking good. Smelling great. Go ahead and show the audience what they're looking at. Here we show go. Show them what you're looking at. <laughs> Perfect. See that? Perfecto. I mean, look at that color. You couldn't ask for anything more. Wonderful. Who could ask for anything, anything more? more? You ought to sing. I got to not <laughs> sing. Okay, Uncle Frank, this yep. is where we're going to take our pasta, our noodles, I should say, oh, put it in there. And this is the fun part. I want to eat it right now. I want you to eat it right now. <laughs> it's okay if you get water in there because it's actually the beneficial ball, yeah. to the, the ball, cooking yeah. process. There we go. Wow, that turned out to be quite a bit, didn't it? Now we're going to turn it off. No heat. You smell that garlic? Yep, yep, yep. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it is. I can't wait to and taste it. that's it. Now we're going to take our Italian parsley. Um, and we're just going to do a little bit to chop it up, a little bit of flavor. <laughs> I'm taking the parsley and I'm rolling it to get a good really? start. Absolutely. And then I'm going to lightly... I never saw that before. You like that? Well, you're teaching me something. I know. Oh, that's great. And then great. we're going to go across this way. Right, right. Perfect. And that's it. And it's okay if a little extra Parmesan cheese gets incorporated into it, right? <laughs> you're going to grab a hearty amount because I know you're hungry. Mm. And then we're going to twist. And we're going to take our toppings. Put it on there, and there you go. Oh no, I want this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that. That's all yours. Oh God, that's fantastic. So that's gonna be it. I put a lot of pressure on me. <sighs> <laughs> okay, you ready? I'm ready. Mm. Somebody, fantastic. Thank Wonderful. you. Let me give it a try. Taste it, fabulous. We're family, let's share. Mm. Not too much. Mm. Oh, thank you Perfect. very much. Mm. Here, you can have this. I'll take this. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Rebecca Romano. This is my Uncle Frank, and this was Wise Guys Cooking. Chidam!